Do you feel like the Hispanic voting bloc, which is growing and coveted, is only courted really every four years? It feels like that. It feels like that. And I think a lot of it has to do with messaging, but also showing up. And it's one of the problems that politicians have. <clears throat> he was being, she was being asked about the Hispanic people being vote. Let's listen to what she said about the Hispanic and vote. Because Hispanics and any other group, but Hispanics in particular, are very sensitive to that. Mm. Do you feel like either party has done a good job of really going after prioritizing Hispanic Latino voters? You know, I think Republicans have gotten uh, much better at it than they were. Uh, they've also gotten better at, uh, I think, manipulating Hispanic psyche in the sense of trying to pit us against other minority groups and making us feel like uh, the Democrats take Hispanics for granted and they appeal to other mm. groups. I also think Republicans have gotten better at micro-targeting Hispanics. The Hispanics in the Rio Grande, the Hispanics in Miami-Dade County, where it can make or break a state election and it can make or break who wins the presidency. You were the national Hispanic co-chair for John McCain back in 2008. Uh, when you look now, fast forward to 2023, are you surprised to see that Arizona is pretty purple? To her, basically, the Republican has really um, um, be, um, be, um, succeeded in convincing the Hispanic about the, the, the mindset, about them not being appreciated by the Democrat, about them being used by the Democrat. So you can see that most of the Hispanic now are turning towards the Democrat to us and voting for the Republican because of the mindset that they have been then, according to her. According to her, she was an um, advocate for Hispanic during John McCain time. And she said John Massey was a, and John McCain was a very a wonderful person. In Arizona, um, the Hispanic um, were very, um, they, were the my, they were the minority, but in Arizona, you had much Hispanic who decided that um, if they had the majority vote, so if you were being supported by the Hispanic in Arizona at that time, it was clear that you as a person for that election, you were going to win because their support was very valid because they were massive in number day. John McCain was an important factor, a very important piece of keeping Arizona's uh, Hispanics. He had Hispanics on his staff. It was something that he was, he couldn't speak a lick of Spanish, but you always felt like he was trying to represent. He did so much on immigration. So I think uh, Hispanics in Arizona felt very particularly about John McCain. His absence is felt. Obviously, Hispanics are, are not a monolith. When you speak in generalities with regard to uh, Hispanic voters and the Republican Party. Do you feel that there's any kind of shift? Because a number of people were shocked when you had Donald Trump really first emerging as a as a candidate for president of the United States. And one of the first comments he makes is about how immigrants are gang members and, and rapists. And yet you had a number of Latinos who then voted and Republican and, and supported Trump. Has that changed? Well, here's the unspoken secret. There's Latinos who are anti-immigrant, too. There's Latinos who want to close the door behind them and who uh, see themselves differently. So it's very important to be able to understand the different nationalities, the different priorities, the different interests. John McCain's presence is being failed, failed according to um, Anna, and she tried to explain that John McCain did a lot for immigration at Arizona, so he did a lot, and... The Hispanic were privileged to have him at that time. That Hispanics have. We are not one big voting blob. Uh, there's political exiles. There's financial. There's economic exiles. There's people who fled gangs. There's people uh, who care a lot about foreign policy. There's people who went through the Civil Rights Act uh, here and who and the the la lucha of uh, bringing the Civil Rights Act um, to fruition. So I think. Uh, it's one of the things that a lot of politicians still don't get. I remember when I first got into politics where 
it was so hard to explain to some folks running nationally that you couldn't have a Hispanic with a Dominican accent uh, narrating a political ad for California or a Latino uh, Chicano from Texas narrating a political ad in Miami in the same way that you'd never have somebody from Alabama narrating a political ad in Boston, mm -hmm. right? But for some reason, people didn't understand that we don't all speak the same Spanish. What would you say if you were to talk to those candidates about trying to court the Hispanic vote? Look, to my shock and surprise, and nothing should shock me at this point from the Republican field, you know I don't like Donald Trump, but I do give him credit because he kept coming back to Miami in particular and courting that Cuban-American community, courting the Venezuelan-American community, courting the Nicaraguan-American community. I think Hispanics want to feel included. I think they want to feel equity. Uh, I think they want to hear their issues mentioned. Venezuelans want to hear. So there, she was being asked that when Donald Trump came in, the first thing he said that, that immigrants, especially Spanish, were gangsters, they were rapists. He has to close the board to avoid them coming in. So she was being asked, that, has that really changed? Surprisingly, she said that secretly you have Hispanic who are also anti um anti-immigrants. They don't want immigrants into the country. They want the 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 border close so they are fighting themselves which is strange fighting your own people so she went ahead and talked about that which is surprising uh the, a condemnation of that dictatorship cubans want to hear moral clarity when it comes to what's happening in cuba nicaraguans want to hear moral clarity in condemning daniel ortega and that dictatorship and i don't think you want to do that in one swath I think you do want to be country specific. Basically, she said, although they were all Hispanic, but they speak different Spanish, which is true. That's why even I'm from Africa. Although we're from Africa, we're different. You have those from South Africa, North Africa, East Africa, and we all do have different accent. And we all do have different ways we look at life. We all do have different perspective about life, views that she said that because you are from africa and you speak with an accent people tend to believe that all of you are the same just like with the hispanic community also can i know your own suggestion on the con thank you very much for watching if you have not subscribed please do not forget to subscribe and help share the video if you really like what, what we are doing i want to become a member which is a partnership to help support what we're doing every day um um, that would be very, uh, we very um, privileged to have you as one of the partner, as one of the um, partner, as one of the partner. Um, thank you very much and God bless you.